Okay, so welcome everybody to the Systemic Agility Community Meetup Group, where I'm very happy to be welcoming Klaus Leopold. Uh, Klaus is a computer scientist, a top management consultant. Uh, he developed the flight levels model because he repeatedly observed a phenomenon in agile transformations, which is that teams are agilized, but these local optimizations don't result in an agile business. Uh, in his book, Rethinking Agility, he shows the reasons for this fallacy and how to avoid it. Uh, Klaus has written two books uh, on the subject Practical Kanban and co-authored Kanban Change Leadership. Uh, and he uses the flight levels model to provide a non-prescriptive thinking framework for organizations to find their individual path to greater business agility. We're very happy to have you, Klaus, and welcome, and over to you. Cool. Thank you, Ryan. All right, so let me share my screen. You should see the screen now. Cool. So, uh, yeah, thanks for having me, um, and thanks for the introduction. Um, well, today I want to share uh, some thoughts about making strategy happen with flight levels. <laughs> so what is the talk about? It's actually two parts. One part is uh, I want to talk a little bit about flight levels, what actually flight levels is. This will be the first part. And the second part is like, okay, let's zoom into flight level three, which is like the strategy uh, flight level. And I will show a little bit what it means. Um, yeah, how you can make strategy happen with flight levels. So I see uh, some flight levels experts here uh, already uh, on the screen, which is great. Um, maybe in the first 10 minutes, uh, you wanna grab a beer or so, because this will be a little bit of repetition for you. But nevertheless, I guess it's a good idea to um, yeah, have a common understanding of what we think flight levels is. So let's start with flight levels. What is flight levels and why do organizations actually work with flight levels? Well, the why I tried to capture in a book, which is called Rethinking Agile. And um, well, this book is basically a story, a picture book, uh, many, many illustrations in it. And it tells a story about an agile transformation, and this agile uh, transformation didn't go as expected. So one of the main goals they wanted to achieve was they wanted to improve their time to market, and they did a huge transformation yeah, in this organization I'm talking about in the book. So they built, um, yeah, uh, they did a, a reorganization, they built cross-functional agile product teams, and really spent um, a shipload of money. And uh, the result was that uh, time to market increased. So this was not the expected outcome, actually. And well, um, yeah, in the book, I explain why this actually happened and what we did in this situation. So uh, what we actually did is we activated this organization with flight levels. We activated this uh, organization. What does this mean, activating? Well, um, I think that flight levels is something like an organizational activator. The point is, most of the time, there is no need for massive waterfall stylish change initiatives with heavyweight frameworks or something like this. Most of the times, all the ingredients you need for agility are already there. You just need to activate them. You need to activate them with a lightweight approach like flight levels. So flight levels is something where you basically activate your organization well, um, yeah, and you build upon what's already there. So um, what does it mean to activate an organization? In flight levels land, we activate two main parts. One is organization-wide collaboration. Organization-wide is important in this um, sentence. So it's not about local optimizations. We see the company as a holistic uh, system and we need to um, activate yeah, it holistically. And this is when we say, okay, activate organization-wide collaboration, and we need to activate uh, strategy and delivery. And that's exactly what Flight Levels uh, does. There's a new book coming out in a couple of days, actually, already, which is called Flight Levels. Guess what it is about? And um, well, if you're good in German, that's for sure an advantage because it will be published in German first. But um, starting from... I. I think August-ish or so, 
the English translation will be available. We publish it chapter by chapter. What a crazy idea. And um, yeah. Um, yeah. And in this uh, book, actually, uh, we talk more about this uh, organization, um, this activation thing um, of, 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 of flight levels. So when, when we say flight levels is an organization activator, how are organizations activating? Uh, yeah. What they are doing is they are establishing five activities on three levels. So let's take a quick look on these five activities and on these uh, three levels, and then we zoom in on the strategic level. So what are the five activities? Activity number one is organizations visualize the situation. This makes a lot of sense, right? So usually the problem what we have in knowledge work is that our work is not visible. So um, if I go through an office building, no matter which, which door I open, I always see the same scene uh, behind the door. People are doing this. This is the kind of visibility uh, we have. So um, if we want to improve something, what we are doing, it actually makes sense that we're not flying, bl uh, flying blind, but that we see what's going on. So we want to make our situation, um, we want to visible. And um, yeah, we can do this by building a board like this. Yeah, so this is how our current reality looks like. So this is activity number one, organizations visualize the situation. Activity number two is create focus. Organizations create focus when they are using flight levels. What does this mean? We essentially want to shift the behavior. We want to shift the behavior from starting work to finishing work because starting work costs money and finishing work brings money. So we want to optimize rather for the income than for uh, the spending of money. And in the end, there are many ways how uh, an organization can create focus. Uh, in Flight Levels Land, um, we see these four um, yeah, ways of creating focus are somehow dominant. Maybe all of you know whip limits, like working process limits, time boxes, like sprints from the Scrum world, but also something like sequencing work or smart start policies help us to create focus. So many ways, but all these ways have one thing in common. We want to shift uh, the behavior from starting work to finishing work. Yeah. Um, so um, organizations visualize the situation and they create focus. What else? Activity number four is that organizations establish agile interactions. What does this mean? Uh, with agile interactions, we mean that the right people talk about the right stuff at the right time. Independent of your org chart, we need to bring the right people together to have the right conversations. Um, the thing is, no board, no of these, none of these, of these visual or, or physical artifacts, they change something. So a board just shows you the situation. You need human beings who make sense out of what they are seeing. And those are uh, the people who are actually doing the improvements. So establishing agile interactions across teams uh, and um, the entire organization is activity number three, what uh, organizations do when they are doing flight levels. Activity number four is measure progress. What does measure progress mean? Well, um, it's about metrics. It's about measurements, right? And usually the problem in organizations is not a lack of measurements. Um, most of the time there are even too many measurements there, but they barely make a lot of sense. So when we talk about measurements in flight levels uh, land, uh, we see measurements as a feedback loop. Doing flight levels for the sake of doing flight levels is quite unsexy. We want to achieve something with it, right? And uh, if we know what we want to achieve, for instance, we want to improve time to market, we want to increase customer satisfaction. I don't know what it is, right? But if we know what we want, it makes sense to set up a measurement which tells us, are we making progress towards our goals or not? Because if we are making progress, we are on the right track. So let's make more right, of it. If we don't make progress, well, we need to change something. So whenever we set up measurements, it's about the feedback loop, right? Um, the cool thing is when you set up a measurement, uh, it also fosters a common understanding. Um, we want to improve quality. Perfect. Many people are probably clapping now because improving quality is always a good thing. But how do we see 
that quality is improving? Do we see it with not so many bugs in the bug tracker or fewer calls in the support center? So what do we mean when we say quality, right? Um, whenever we come up with a measurement, we need to be, yeah, we need, we need to have a common understanding what we actually mean when we say something. And whenever we come up with uh, a measurement, we also need to come up with counter measurements uh, to avoid to sub-optimize the whole system. So for instance, it's quite easy to improve time to market. We just need to drop a little bit of quality and burn out our stuff. So um, that's actually not what we want to do, right? So whenever we uh, set a goal, chances are high that the system tries to achieve this goal. So we need to find um, yeah, counter measurements so that we don't sub-optimize the system. That's also something what um, organizations do when they are doing uh, flight levels. So they measure the progress. This is activity number four. And activity number five is improve. Improve basically means um, we are never, ever done. So in flight levels land, we have this saying that whenever you take a look at a flight level system, what you see is the latest state of misunderstanding. Uh, you think this is right, maybe it is, but it's only right for now. <laughs> maybe in a day, uh, reality is different. And well, the idea is it's it's harder to bend reality than to uh, change a flight level system, right? So uh, you're never ever done. This means you're always reiterating over these uh, five activities. So the point is, these five activities are somehow part of, of the core. We also call it the core activities of flight levels. So organizations establish these five activities uh, yeah, in their daily doing. And the outcome is something like this. You get a visualization, yeah, a board with a couple of um, yeah, policies around it regarding creating focus and with some probably meetings and measurements, right? The question is, what is unique about this? I mean, if I take a look at this, this could be easily like a camping board or this could be a scrum board or I don't know if maybe if you're doing uh, design thinking or something like this, you also come up with boards like that. Well, the thing is that we're not applying these five activities somewhere isolated in the organization. The point is that we are applying these five activities at three flight levels, yeah? And yeah, this is exactly where the flight levels come in. So flight level is a term from aviation and it basically describes how, how high an aircraft is flying. And depending on my height, on my altitude, uh, I see different things, right? It's not about good or bad, I just see different things. When I'm flying very low, I see a lot of details, right? Uh, I see cars, I see uh, people walking around on the pavement. When I fly by very high, um, I see very wide, but I don't see a lot of details, right? And the same is true uh, in organizations. We can fly very low in organizations where we see a lot of details, all the details our people are currently working on. This is um, the operational level, flight level one. Operational level, our teams, the teams who are actually doing the operational work, right? And the idea is that these teams now uh, incorporate these five activities in their daily doing. Yeah? So they will build this board, they visualize the situation, create focus, establish agile directions, measure the progress and improve. Usually an organization has more than only, on than only one team. So we will see multiple flight level one systems popping up in our organization. Then there's another thing that most of the time one team alone cannot deliver 100% of the customer value. Most of the time, multiple teams need to collaborate in order to uh, deliver value to the customer. That's nothing that we can solve on flight level one. We need to fly a little bit higher in order to solve this. And this means we need to fly on flight level two. Flight level two is the coordination level. On this coordination level, we make sure that the right team is working on the right stuff at the right time. Yeah, and the thing is we are connecting this flight level two with the flight level one systems. So we just make sure that the right team is working on the right stuff at the right time. And how we are doing it, we are basically building another board here, another uh, flight level system uh, by applying these five uh, activities. So also on flight level two, we visualize the situation, create focus, 
um, yeah, establish agile interactions, uh, measure progress, and improve. Yeah. So flight level two is usually the world of everything that somehow uh, delights your customers. This is the world of your products, of your services, and so on. Usually, an organization has more than only one product or service. So we will also see multiple flight level two systems popping up in an organization. Yeah, And again, we're just applying these uh, five uh, activities. And the cool thing is from the viewpoint of a flight level two, we actually don't care what kind of methods the teams are using. Remember, we just make sure that the right team is working on the right stuff at the right time. We don't care if these teams are doing Scrum or I don't know if they're doing Kanban or if they're just working. That's also fine, right? So we just make sure the right team is working on the right stuff at the right time. Now, when we have these multiple flight level two systems, multiple products and services on the market, there might be the situation that we have dependencies between these products and services. You know the situation, you change something in this product, this means we need to change something over there and over there. So um, what do we do to um, yeah, deal with this problem? Well, we built another flight level two system because this is another coordination problem. That's this board here uh, in the middle, which somehow bridges these two um, yeah, products and services here. Um, yeah, it's another coordination problem. And that's why it's, again, flight level two. Um, then, hopefully, uh, there is this question in an organization, are we heading into the right direction? Where are we actually flying to? And this can be answered on flight level three. Flight level three is the strategic level. On, threat, on flight level three, we want to align the work in the organization to the strategy and we want to make strategy happen. So these are uh, the three flight levels. And um, yeah, uh, maybe some, some notes about uh, the three flight levels because there's one thing that's always somehow misunderstood. When people see this picture, sometimes it's like, great, it looks like our org chart. So we can easily map our org chart uh, on the three flight levels and then we're done. So flight level one, we can easily find them on the org chart. These are the teams, right? They are on the org chart. Flight level three, um, yeah, maybe the C-suite somewhere up there. And flight level two is the rest in the middle, departments and no matter whatever you have in your organization. That's exactly not the point of flight levels and not this important word here. So flight levels, does not need an organization or an organizational structure. So the idea behind flight levels is that, for instance, these two teams, they are working together. Uh, so, sorry, these, these two teams, they are working here, team two and team three. And they come in a situation where they always have dependencies on each other. Then maybe they come to this conclusion that they're like, okay, let's build a flight level two system where we can see these dependencies and manage these dependencies across all these teams where we have uh, dependencies. So the flight level two is the flight level system of the teams. The teams are building the flight level two system. And maybe uh, another flight level two is, is built, right? And uh, yeah, hopefully someone asks, okay, are we somehow flying in the right direction? So the team, the, the people who are working on flight level two, who are no one else than the teams actually, are building the flight level three. So on the flight level three, you could see people from the teams working there. So the point is we do not need an org chart uh, to make flight level, to work with flight levels. However, of course, there will be an org chart in your organization and there will be some roles, like for instance, I don't know, product managers or something like this, who are somehow, somehow attached to a flight level two or who can be assigned to flight level two systems. So that's fine. But the point is, it's not a hierarchical model which somehow uh, can be put over your uh, org chart. We want to capture uh, the operational structure and not uh, the organizational structure. And I think that that's really important. So you don't need an org chart uh, when you're working with uh, flight levels. So these are the three flight levels. And what I would like to do now, I would like to zoom in on flight level three. Flight level three is the strategic level. This means uh, on flight level three, we are also applying these five activities, yeah? And we build uh, a flight level three system. And yeah, I will sh show you a little bit how something uh, like this could look like. 
So strategy, and it's about delivering strategy. I guess that's also a quite important thing. And uh, if I take a look how strategy delivery often looks like in organizations, mm, then it's a little bit, let's say, odd. Let's draw a timeline because timelines are always good. Um, how is strategy work approached in many organizations? In many organizations, people are working on stuff. And that's great because that's why they get paid, right? Uh, and then there is this event once in the year where the strategy is announced. Yeah, sometimes with a huge party with roasted ant liver and stuffed chive rolls or I don't know what, or sometimes just like with an unromantic email. So this is our new strategy. And usually this leads to the behavior that people continue to work on the stuff that they have worked before. Yeah? Up to this point where the end of year sign is coming closer and closer. And when people see this end of year sign, this triggers another behavior in an organization. This triggers this behavior where more and more PowerPoint slides are being created. Strategy fulfillment.ppt. And what people are doing now is they are somehow backward mapping the stuff that they have worked on to the strategy. It's like, okay, we have worked on this project. This fits into this strategy bucket. We've worked on that one, digitalization. Everything fits into this bucket, right? So we're somehow backward mapping uh, what we have done to the strategy. So the strategy is a kind of justification uh, of, 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 of things, what we have done. But the point is, this is not strategy delivery, right? Backward mapping is not strategy delivery. When it comes to delivery, uh, to deliver a strategy, we need to get to a forward loop. This means we hopefully have something like long-term business outcomes that we want to achieve. We derive a strategy, how we get there. How do we achieve this long-term strategy? Then we hopefully derive something like midterm and short-term outcomes, which tells us, okay, are we on the right track? Are we going to achieve our long-term outcomes? Then we derive a set of coherent actions, which are like, I don't know, we are working on epics, we are working on projects, on initiatives, whatever. We call it flight items, it's a general term, yeah, right? And these uh, flight items, these actions, they bring us closer to our outcomes. And we continually measure our outcomes uh, to see whether we are making progress and we learn. And uh, yeah, learning means we're adapting. So you can adapt everything in this loop and you can, you, you should adapt actually everything in this loop, right? So the point is strategy is not a plan. Strategy is not a plan and strategy is not PowerPoint. One of the most important things is when it comes to deliver uh, an effective strategy, then we need to break free from PowerPoint and we need to make strategy delivery explicit. And that's exactly what the Flight Level 3 system can do. So um, what you can see here is an example Flight Level 3 board. The word example is important here because this is completely wrong what I'm showing you now. <laughs> it's wrong for your context, right? This organization thinks that, um, yeah, they, they are working like this. And I think it's a good system, but the point is, it's just an example, and you need to figure it out um, how it looks like on, uh, yeah, in your context. But nevertheless, the idea is, I would like to show you the bits and parts on uh, this flight level three system here to see what this organization is doing. Yeah. So the very first thing when it comes to um, building a flight level three or when, when, when we try to capture the essence of flight level three is we make strategy and delivery explicit. And I think that's important because um, in many organizations, we have to unite two separated worlds. In many organizations, we have two separated worlds. One world is strategy world and the other wor world is the delivery world. In the strategy world, people are working with Ho Chi Minh country. They are doing SWOT analysis. They are doing the, I don't know, uh, strategizer framework, OKRs, uh, KPIs, and so on and so on, right? So we have one group of people who is working with all these kind of things. And then we have 
uh, the delivery world. And in the delivery world, um, the organization is doing something like Kanban, they are doing Scrum, maybe Safe, Nexus, I don't know what, right? And most of the time, these are really like two separate worlds with not much overlap and not much communication with each other. So the point is, we want to, um, yeah, connect these two worlds. And that's exactly uh, one thing what a flight level three system does. So um, if we take a look at this picture here, on the right side, this box here, this is the delivery part. Yeah? And the rest is the strategy part of the flight level three system. And the point is both the delivery part and the strategy part, they are part of one board and they are connected to each other. So um, let's zoom into the delivery part first. On the delivery part, we have to deal with flight items. This is the set of coherent actions, as I said before. Flight items is basically the epics, the initiatives, the projects. I don't know what your organization is working on, right? Um, these are the things that we have uh, on the Flight Level 3 system, in this example, on the very right uh, side. So we, we have some projects here or initiatives, right? And they are represented in a kind of flow, kind of flow. So um, this is a very, very simple board, what we see. So these are like uh, the initiatives that are still on ground. These are the ones that are in flight. We can demo these guys and those are done. Yeah. The thing is, we don't need uh, a lot of mm, detailed information here um, on, on the flight level three, how the delivery is being done, because that's the reason why we have our flight level two and flight level one systems. But the point is, when you have an uh, initiative or epic or whatever here on the flight level three system in this realization part, in this delivery part, these exact items could be uh, exist as a as a copy on the flight level two system and here on the flight level two system uh we have um yeah a more detailed view actually how we are working on these uh initiatives but we don't care so much uh on flight level three how we are approaching it but nevertheless we need to link uh, we, we need to have a link between the strategy uh and uh the um yeah the projects and initiatives that we are doing so what I've shown you here is a link between the flight level three and the flight level two system. That's not the only, only way how you can link uh, flight level boards together, especially flight level three boards. So um, yeah, flight level three, flight level two is very common. We also see flight level three to flight level three links. Imagine you are working in a group uh, of companies. You have multiple companies. So you have something like a group strategy, which boils down to uh, yeah the single companies strategy so you can connect flight level three with flight level three systems you can connect flight level three with flight level one systems so there's many ways of how you can connect uh, your strategy with your delivery uh, choose whatever makes sense in your sen uh, whatever makes sense in in, in your situation uh, the important part is that you are connecting it yeah and that's exactly the the second um yeah thing that flight level two systems mm, do they link strategy and delivery. Just not make it explicit alone, we also link it together. Uh, and well, uh, that's also quite important because the thing is when you are linking strategy and delivery, you have to be aware of that in many organizations at least, there is something what we call the strategy delivery gap. There is a gap between strategy and delivery. What does this mean? In many organizations, we have a strategy paper. In this strategy paper, it's described uh, what we desire, um, who we are, uh, and 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 yeah, what are our long-term uh, goals that we want to achieve, and how we get there. So this is like we're talking about years most of the time in these strategy papers, and then uh, in many organizations, people are working on some delivery tasks where we are talking about I don't know in the next two weeks or something like this, this happens. So there is usually quite a huge gap in between this strategy and uh, the delivery tasks. And this triggers some problems actually. So I've seen it so often that for instance, one of the strategy guys says, okay, in two years, we will dominate the Asian market. 
And people from the delivery side of the organization, they are, got, they are like, you guys are completely nuts. It doesn't even work in our market. It will never, ever work in Asia with all these funny symbols and so on, right? So we see this, we see this mismatch so often. We also see another mismatch. Uh, the delivery people are often like, okay, can someone please tell us the priorities for the next sprints? And the strategy people are like, well, I have no clue what you are up for in the next two weeks, but in two years, we will dominate the Asian market, right? So it's really quite hard uh, that these two uh, group of peoples have a, a communication together if this huge gap uh, exists. And uh, the idea is that on flight level three, we want to bridge this gap. And how are we doing it? Well, uh, in the end, we have our strategy paper and hopefully we already have some long-term outcomes in the strategy paper, but we don't, uh, uh, we, we are not satisfied with the long-term outcomes um, alone. We break them down to midterm outcomes. We break the midterm outcomes down to short-term outcomes. And then, uh, yeah, when we're talking about short-term outcomes, outcomes, uh, we can quite easily connect to delivery tasks. So um, we break outcomes down in different time scales. That's the important uh, thing here. And how are we doing this on the board? Well, on the board, this is done by these two boxes in this example that I'm showing you. Maybe it's completely different uh, in your context, but this organization thinks it's a good idea to represent it like this. So let's zoom in. What do we see here? We basically see three boxes, uh, long-term business outcomes, outcomes for one year and outcomes less than three months. So we have these uh, three mm, yeah, uh, different time scales um, here. And uh, on these uh, or in these boxes, we see the outcomes that we want to achieve. For instance, okay, drones as a service is a business case with 25% of our uh share of our core business yeah so this organization is like building drones and the thing is these boxes are not static boxes um the items in these uh, boxes like the outcomes they move they move in this example on a two-dimensional scale we have on the x-axis the progress this means uh, when we are talking about this 25 percent uh, market share how much of this market share do we already have? So we see progress uh, on the X scale. We also see um, confidence on the Y scale. Confidence means like, okay, how confident are we that we are um, achieving this goal? So uh, on the flight level three system in these uh, outcome areas, uh, we see items move around up and down and left and right. So we are not talking about flow boards here. So outcomes do not flow like a river. Outcomes fly like helicopters. They are moving in, in all directions. And I think that's that's quite important. Um, yeah, and that's also one thing why um, most of the flow tools that we see on the market are yeah not really suitable for uh, flight level three systems. So we need different, uh, different boards even. Okay. Um, Yes, so outcomes is important. This means uh, we break down the outcomes because we want to incorporate various times, time frames on our flight level three systems. So we make strategy and delivery explicit, we link strategy and delivery, and we incorporate different uh, time frames. Uh, what else? When we're talking about outcomes, we also need to provide context, contextual information. And that's exactly another thing what uh, a flight level three system should do. What does it mean when I say provide context? Let's assume we have a midterm outcome. Yeah. And this midterm outcome, mid outcome tells us until the end of the year, we want to gain 10 reference customers for our new product. Okay, 10. So why 10? Why not eight or 8,000? Yeah, so uh, the idea is uh, you need to provide context of all the bits and parts that are being visualized on uh, the system 
uh, in a human understandable way. So uh, all the stakeholders that are working with the flight level three system, they need to be aware of what's going on here and you need to give them meaning. I need to understand why it makes sense to have 10 uh, reference customers or whatever your outcome actually is, yeah? And when I say human understandable way, I actually don't mean the 300 pages uh, strategy slide that uh, your consulting company left when they uh, went away. Uh, what I mean is really accessible content uh, and the bits and parts that are important. So a link to SharePoint where the 300 pages uh, somewhere are fermenting, uh, that's not what we want to, that's not what we want to. What we want to is something like this, what we see here, essential information. Uh, and they provide context to what's going on here uh, on our board, on our flight level three system. So this kind of context could, <clears throat> could be something like, um, yeah, textual content, uh, which somehow describes why we want to achieve this outcome. So there's some reasoning behind it, right? Um, stories can be even more. It doesn't have to be only attached to outcomes maybe stories to our entire organization might be helpful, like something like guiding principles, which tells us, okay, that's the reason why we are here. These are the things that we do. And even more important, these are the things that we don't do. So this is really like uh, set the context for, for, the, for the entire organization. This is in scope, this is out of scope, yeah? Um, yeah, this is textual representation, what you see here. But of course, stories are not limited to textual information and they are not user stories. That's also important. I'm really talking about stories. Yeah. Tell me a story. And it doesn't have to be uh, textual information. It could be tools. Use tools like a wordly map. Uh, put a business model canvas up there. I don't know. Uh, scenario plans. There are so many great tools out there where companies are doing uh, strategy with whatever makes sense to capture the context, what's going on on the Flight Level 3 system, basically what, what matters for your organization, put it on the Flight Level 3 system. Another thing which also provides context and which I think is essential, especially on Flight Level uh, 3, is data. And when, I call up, when, when, when I'm talking about data on the Flight Level 3, I'm talking about business data. And I think that's very, very important measurements that are important for your business. On flight level three, I don't care about velocity, about lead time, about throughput, and all these delivery metrics. That's the world of your flight level two and your flight level one systems. On flight level three, I care about business metrics. I care about number of customers. I care about a uh, number of orders. I care about, I don't know what your organization uh, uh, is up to, right? So uh, it's really important that we have business data on a flight level three system. And again, uh, this is something what I don't see captured in tools these days, unfortunately. So um, we have a ton of tools that provide like lead time data and you can build this third derivation of a cumulative flow diagram and so on. This is all great stuff for flight level two and flight level one, but on flight level three, I don't need this. On flight level three, I need interfaces to Luca. I need interfaces to Microsoft Power BI. I want business on, on flight level three. And that's also stories because they provide contextual information of how we are actually doing in the business. And flight level three is all about business. I hope this message gets across now. <laughs> um, yes. So um, that's, uh, yeah, the fourth uh, topic that's somehow uh, very important on flight level three systems. Flight Level 3 systems, they explain the context to the people who are working with the board. So it's not just like the artifacts that are somehow uh, yeah, uh, put up on a board. We also have the context why stuff matters. And when we are working with Flight Level 3 systems, it also makes sense to keep our eyes open for opportunities and ideas. And many organizations also visualize opportunities, opportunities and ideas and they not only visualize them, they also work with opportunities and ideas. In our example, where do we see them? This is this box up here. 
So it, the headline says, explore and refine ideas and opportunities. So uh, let's zoom in again. How does this look like? Well, the thing is, whenever we see an opportunity, we put it in this box here. For instance, there is this opportunity that, uh, yeah, we have the chance to acquire one of our uh, competitors. So let's put it into this box. We have a great idea that we could sell something like action drones in our drone business. So let's put it in the, uh, into this box. The thing is, uh, like the outcomes before, it's not just a box. It's again, um, a two-dimensional space that we see here in this example. On one dimension, uh, we see how good are we understanding uh, this opportunity or um, yeah, this idea. So almost no understanding up to a very good understanding. So we somehow uh, yeah, try to capture how good uh, do we understand what's, what this opportunity actually, uh, yeah, what this opportunity is and how good it is for our uh, company. And on the X axis, we also have a scale and this is the time scale. You see, it's somehow linked to the outcomes here. So this means on the very right, it's linked to the, to the delivery part of the organization. So this is the now. Here, the soon, well, three months or so, later, one year, and even later, where is yeah, somewhere in a couple of years. And I think that's also very important because I see it so often in organizations that someone comes up with a great idea uh, they pitch this idea and some people totally destroy this idea. And maybe they don't destroy this idea because it's a bad idea. They destroy this idea because they are thinking of different time scales. Uh, the guy who's pitching the idea is thinking of, okay, in two years, this might be uh, a great thing to do. And other people might hear in the next, uh, I don't know, two weeks, we shall work on it. So of course I attack this idea because our, our mental time horizons don't match. And if you would somehow um, yeah, sort your opportunities and ideas uh, on a time scale and in a scale like how good you understand them, this really helps to focus these uh, discussions about opportunities and ideas. And the point is we need to talk about opportunities and ideas. And the thing is we need to talk about and we need to work on them. In this organization, what they are doing is they meet uh, every two weeks on a Friday, actually, and um, they do a refinement of uh, these items. So this is not a, a dumpster where you put the uh, items in it and then, uh, yeah, you wait until they fall down from the board. But it's really it's active work that's going on. So uh, in a two week cadence, they are refining these items. And of course, items disappear. Maybe items jump straight into uh, into one of the boxes below because we think, yes, we have to do it and we we need to to take this opportunity. So it's really like it's an it's an active uh, thing what we need to do. And this is also something what many flight level three systems cover that they continuously refine uh, ideas and opportunities. Yeah. So um, yeah, these are actually the five most important things when it comes to flight level three systems, what they can um, yeah, be good for. So flight level three systems, they make strategy and delivery explicit. They link strategy and delivery together. They incorporate various timeframes, which is also very important. They explain the content context they bring meaning right and you can continuously refine ideas and opportunities so if we take a look at the whole picture how this looks like what we see here is outcomes remember these are these three boxes oh like outcomes what we also see is flight items these are the, co uh, the set of coherent actions that we are working on and we see stories which provide context. And this is Sophie. Yeah. What is Sophie? Sophie is the strat strategy interface um, of flight levels. And um, Sophie st stands for stories, outcomes, and flight items. And uh, the nice uh, thing of this uh, strategy interface is that you don't need to change how you do strategy today when you want to uh, use flight levels to deliver your strategy. The thing is, 
that you basically map all your artifacts that are already there to Sophie, and then you are in flight levels land. And once you are in flight levels land, flight levels tells you what you need to improve. So that's the idea uh, behind um, uh, flight levels. Flight levels doesn't tell you how to do strategy. You basically map the way how you're doing strategy today to our strategy interface, which is called Sophie. And then uh, flight levels tells you what to improve. How do you map it? Well, first, you make your flight items visible on the flight level three board. You visualize your long, mid, and short-term outcomes. You connect your outcomes with the flight items. And you provide context with stories. And that's basically it. Yes, so if you are interested in flight levels, join our community, flightlevels.io slash join. And if you are in particular interested in uh, flight level three and want to go deeper uh, of what I've um, explained right now, there's a workshop which is called FL3D, which stands for flight level three design. So just go to flightlevels.io and see uh, where some workshops are being offered. That's it. Thank you. Thanks, Klaus. So are you happy to take some questions? Sure. Anna? Great. So yeah, either type it into the chat or uh, raise your hand and I'll look out for you. Uh, there's a couple come up um, on the chat already. Uh, one uh, hopefully basic one is, um, can people get the presentation? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Uh, okay, so maybe we'll start with uh, the hands up. So we've got Alex. Do you want to unmute yourself? Hi there, Klaus. Brilliant talk. Thank you so much for it. We're doing quite a lot of work um, in my company on um, on level two design at the moment, and so the next step for us is to go that level three, which I will probably look to do later on this year. Not a question, just a request. Um, love your writing. Um, love your work. Please run an FL three D course in English. Uh, this year, and I will be uh, front of the line to join it. That was just uh, just my request. Yes, thank you, Alex. It's already on my list. So I just gave this presentation in London two days before. Uh, yeah. yeah, and this was exactly the request there. So there thank will you. be I, FL3 days. I, I couldn't make the conference, but I heard it was great. Cool. Thanks, Alex. Great. Thanks, Alex. And then we've got uh, another longer version of Alex Alexander. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Klaus, thanks a lot for the presentation. Uh, question from my side, like that, that is like a, a very well, or, or, or at least it appears like a very well thought through way of expressing the flight level three, like what is inside and, and you know, you kind of, you're not talking about OKR specifically, but more about you know, strategy and how, how, and how the different horizons can be expressed. Um, could you could you elaborate a little bit on let's say how experimental that is? Like, is it something that that came up during mm. like, the last project, or <laughs> is it like the to be standard that has been validated like twenty times? Or could you give? Thank like you for thank you so much for this question. So yeah. um, the thing is, we're building flight level three systems for I don't know ten years or something like this now. But um, whenever I built a Flight Level 3 system, it was a completely tailored workshop because the situation where I came to was always unique. So one organization was working with balanced core cards. The others were using OKRs. Others have a, a heavy KPI system and so. So I was always like preparing um, a, a Flight Level 3 design workshop for this particular context because the context was, was different. And um, in the end, when I zoom out a little bit, what I did was always the same <laughs> because I always took what's already there and I brought it to flight levels land. And Sophie is nothing else than like the zoom out version. So we can go in the public workshop now. You can bring all your uh, strategic artifacts. You map it to Sophie and you're in flight levels land. So it's basically nothing else than what I've done for 10 years now. I just didn't know that I'm doing it. So, so does this make sense? So it's basically the the abstraction or the meta 
view on on let's say the more specific ways that you did it during during your past experience exactly and the point is uh, that's what i what i wanted to get across when i've shown uh, you the board and when i when i said okay that's an example in this organization it turns out that it looks like this it might look completely different in 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 your context but that's exactly the thing when you go through a flat level three design process uh it's tailored to your uh, unique situation um, and then maybe question number two, and then and then I hand it back. Um, I think that the the point about stories was just too quick for me. So maybe if you could go back to that slide and just briefly show again, or maybe give a word or two about how stories work in the context. In the of end, in the end, they just provide context. So you see outcomes here, for instance, right? And you see an outcome that you, I don't know, you want to reach 100 customers, but why 100? Give me a reason, okay? No. Yeah, and give no. me a reason what we are doing in the first place here. So this is all what stories is about, uh, contextual information, and that's it. So the story informs the outcomes and the outcomes inform then the flight items. Okay, yeah. this is why it's Sophie. Okay, okay, thanks. I was missing that link. Cool. Oh, maybe maybe we'll go back to the chat uh, question. Uh, there was one from Christoph. It's it's like an like I think Christoph's giving an example. He's saying to achieve our midterm outcome, we need to hire three top engineers within three months. Where would you track this kind of initiative or action? To achieve our midterm, we need to hire. Uh, yeah, this would be if I understand it correctly. Um, this would be part of uh, the outcomes here. This would be probably in this box. In the next three months, we want to hire these uh, three engineers, I guess it was. Does this answer the question? But if I if I understand the question correctly, then the answer is in this box. <laughs> and, and mute yourself if you want, Christoph, but yeah, it makes sense to me. Yes, yeah, that's, that's good, yes. That's, that's exactly what I wanted to know. Thank you. Cool. Great, thanks. Uh, let's go back to Frederick on the um, video. Thank you. So I was at Lena John London and I heard really good things about your talk. So I'll repeat what Alexander said. If you if you can do an FL3D in English, that will be better. Ich habe nicht gesprochen Deutsch für eine sehr lange Zeit. So um, uh, two questions. The first one, earlier you, you were speaking about visualization. You had a slide early on that visualization and you had these five items, the five activities, but the visualization was a board. And very often working in strategy, I've been describing, visualizing the business in different ways, like mm -hmm. a, 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 a bit more like a business model canvas or so the, the organizational structure and how it will evolve and so on. H how and where would you include these visualizations? Um, both at the strategic level, but also at the more practical level, so that people have a sense of what's coming. Mm. So transparency. Yeah. So um, I, I would think like business model canvas and stuff like this, these are stories. They provide context of what we are doing, right? And uh, so this would be somewhere here on the board. I don't know even if this is a board. So when people think of boards, Oh, when people hear boards, they usually think of something like this, right? That's a board. But flight level three is completely uh, different. You see, it, it has nothing to do with, um, with a board. I mean, of course, there, there is this flow kind of board here, but uh, there's way more around it. But I think that's exactly the point. We need more. Flight level three is not about flow. Flight level three is about business. On flight level two and flight level one, we are talking about flow. Perfect. We are in camp and land. We can do scrum. We can all these kind of things to um, make delivery great. But on flight level three, we need more information. And business model canvas and such is definitely context. I see it very, very often that it's just like here on the board. And do you pass it to an FL, uh, D, uh, I mean, a, a flight level two, so that people who actually do the work and coordinate have a sense of shared context? Yeah. Um, you know, a friend of mine, uh, Siggy Kaltenecker, he always says, okay, how, 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 much, how many liter schnapps to fit in a schnapps glass? 
And <laughs> this is the problem when we have like 40-ish uh, minutes to talk about, but this is exactly covered uh, in the connection patterns here. So um, in, if, if, you, if you see something like this, number six here, you see, or number five, you have a flightable three system and you have a combination of the flightable three and the flightable two system. This exactly means I'm passing these uh, strategic information from a flight level three to a flight level two system. So this flight level two system has parts of a flight level three in it, yeah? And maybe others, they don't because they don't need it, right? Does this answer your question? Yes, perfectly, thank you. Cool. Awesome, I think we've got just enough time for one last question. Uh, I'll take it from the chat from Joanna. Uh, she says, I feel like a lot of the FL3 visualizations match Abaya thinking. Have you seen companies change from Abaya's to FL3 boards and artifacts successfully? Honestly, I don't have seen many companies doing Obeya, so it's quite hard to, um, yeah, it's, it's quite hard to say. But I will also say, um, like what I understand from I, um, from Obeya, and I'm I'm for sure not an expert, <laughs> but Obeya is this room where you have a lot of information. So I think this is really something what uh, like this 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 core idea is also present on flight level three. But I'm not an Obeya expert, totally not. Awesome. Okay. Thanks, Klaus, and thanks everyone for for joining us. Uh, and uh, uh, Klaus, uh, do you want to just share the link uh, to the presentation with me? Yes. Yeah, uh, I'll put it onto the um, uh, meetup page. Uh, so if you go back there, you'll see that in the chat or in the messages. Uh, thanks again. Any last words from you, Klaus, to close? I'm happy. Thanks for having me. <laughs> thanks, right. Ryan. And thanks, yep. everybody, for showing up here. Thank you. I'm, I'm very happy to. And um, yeah, thanks. Have a good rest of your day, morning, night, evening, wherever you are in the world. And uh, see you again next time. Thank you. It's beer o'clock. Goodbye. Bye.